Good morning, October 11th. God has a plan. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John chapter 1, verse 14. Deism is the worldview that says the universe was created and set in motion by God, who then abandoned it, exerting no control over its outcome. Deism compares God to a highly skilled watchmaker who creates a mechanical marvel, then winds it up and sets it to ticking before walking away. There is no revelation, biblical or scientific, to support such a theory. Those who hold it do so on the basis of reason alone. Besides being unsupported, it is a highly impersonal, even depressing view of God, creation, and human existence and destiny. The Bible's view of God is totally different. He created us in His image with a plan to spend eternity with us. In spite of the disruption of sin, the second member of the Godhead, Jesus Christ, came to earth to fix the problem of sin and bring us back into relationship with God, making it possible for God's original design for eternal fellowship to be ultimately realized. The day of the Incarnation, when God became a man to dwell among us, is the day God proved His promise, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. The Atonement is the real reason for the Incarnation. James Montgomery Boyce Good evening, chosen to bear fruit. I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. John chapter 15, verse 16. God's people are new creations. This is the result of a personal experience with the living Christ, which we enter into because of God's love for us. His love is pure, undeserved mercy and grace. Through His grace and our surrender to His love, we become fruit-bearing disciples. God called us to serve Him with joy, no matter how hard the task. If we do not have joy, our service becomes nothing more than slave labor. Our life should radiate joy, because God gave us the privilege of becoming His children and working for Him, working with Him. We were chosen to serve in love. Without love, we cannot be ambassadors of the source of all true love. Love gives us a passion for souls and keeps us from competing with one another for petty honors. Since Christ calls us his friends, we must guard against becoming like the elder brother in the parable of the prodigal son who begrudged serving his father. We are fellow workers with Christ, and our service and the fruit we bear should be evidence of all that is best and most noble in our lives.